All right, I think we're live. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Warren Flax. This is my mother, Deirdre Silver. We are a part of Silver Brush Limited, and uh, we want to thank you once again for joining us. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, we really enjoyed the last four or five months now that we've been doing this and getting six months. We started in April. Mm -hmm. So thank you all uh, for all of your participation, for all of your great questions, your great comments. Um, our focus, as you know, is fine artist paintbrushes, and that's all we do. That's all we talk about. We're a family-owned business. My mom started the company uh, in 1990 and 1991 and um, started it in the basement of our house, and now here we are. Um, selling products all over the world and helping great artists like you um, in, in achieving your dreams and, and getting done what you want to do with your artwork. So that being said, uh, today we're very excited to talk to you about one of our newer products. Uh, it's this line, Silver Silk 88. Um, some of you are familiar with it, some of you are not. Um, but in particular, uh, we're going to talk about fluid acrylics. Uh, we're going to talk about all the great things that, that are out there in the industry that this particular brush you know is effective for because uh, it's unique in the marketplace there's really nothing else like it and that's why it's become so popular it's only been on the market for two years um, and, and a lot of things have changed in the last two years of course right um, so we're going to talk about that uh, my mom's going to get into specifics of what she was thinking about when she designed the brush uh, why you designed the brush and if people want to know what to use it for of course you're going to demonstrate all of that um, and of course, we're giving away some free brushes. So I have two great sets for you. Uh, one of them is in the Silver Silk line, but it's this mini mop set. So we're going to give this away, and I know you're excited to show everybody the new mini mop set. Mm -hmm. And then also, we created a set for you just for, for those of you watching this um, Facebook Live. And this has a lot of great unique shapes, because this is a very unique product line. It has 15 different shapes. Uh, it has a soft curve. It has a, a cat's tongue. Uh, it has an ultra round, round, an angle, and a dagger stripe. But all of them are in this set that we're going to give away at the end of this 45-minute Facebook Live. And we have a face, uh, another silver brush case uh, that will go to one of our winners as well. So with that, uh, I'm going to introduce again uh, the founder and president of Silver Brush Limited, Jim Silver. Good morning or good afternoon, wherever you are. I hope you're all doing very well, and I hope you're staying safe and healthy. Um, so, let's talk a little bit about um, Silver Silk 88. Um, it's an exciting line. It really is. It's a very exciting line. Um, I designed it for those folks that like to paint with fluid acrylics. Little did I know that people, of course, they, they buy a brush and then they experiment with it in so many other mediums. So, it gives us an opportunity to have multiple uses for the one, for the one series. Um, so what makes this better? What makes this different from anything else that's out there? What's different about Silver Silk is, is the filament itself. The filament took us, oh, about two years to come up with. Um, it's very, very different from everything else that's on the marketplace. So typically, um, and you may have seen me do this before, but I'm going to do it again. Um, typically, this is what synthetic filament looks like when you cut it and you see the side of it. So notice how all of the filament is exactly the same size. It's, it's, it's extruded plastic. Uh, the best analogy I can say, and I've been to the factories where this is made, it reminds me of a meat grinder. You know when you put something in a meat grinder and it all comes out exactly the same, the same uh, width as everything else because the holes are exactly the same? That's what this kind of looks like too. Um, so, what, well, how do you make a better synthetic brush? Well, the way you do that is by putting multiple size filaments together. There's zero friction with this. If you use a brush that comes with uh, filaments just like this, the, it, the moisture is just going to completely flow out. It's, you're going to put it down and you're just going to see nothing but puddles on your, on your surface. What we want to do is hold the moisture on the filament itself, and you need friction for that. So that's what, I, we, that's what we do here at Silver Brush. I use anywhere from five to eight, maybe 10 different size diameters in each one of the brushes, so you have that marvelous friction holding the moisture on the, each of the filaments. It's, it's, a, you know, it's something that we've done since the very beginning, 
and that's why our brushes have such fabulous holding capacity. Notice when I put it, my, the brush down, it doesn't puddle. Now, some other brushes that I've played with over the years from other people, you put the brush down and it starts a terrible, terrible put puddle. And the brush, to me, is functionally useless. But I went a step further with this particular series because it really needed something to, to hold and grip some very, very fine acrylic type paint, which is what I consider fluid acrylic. So what I did was I took uh, the filaments and what we do is we actually make grooves around the edges. The grooves around the edges hold the, the material, the color, the fluid that you're using onto the filaments. So you're not gonna have any moisture just flow right out. You're gonna have great holding capacity. And I can show that to you here. I've got a palette filled with paint today. And these are some great booklets I'm gonna show you as well. So this is what I have on my palette. I have watercolors. I have, these are fluid acrylics, these three fluid acrylics. This is another watercolor. Then over here, I've got opaque watercolor. That's gouache. I have three of, I have two of those. And then I have traditional acrylics over here. So what I wanted to do is prove to you how versatile Silver Silk 88 is. Basically, any of the water type media that you're doing you will be able to do with this particular series. Mom, a few questions about what sure. the brush is made of. So it's not a natural hair, it's a no, synthetic. No, it's 100% synthetic fiber. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Um, pretty much those were the two that were around that. Uh, uh -huh. So people keep asking what type of brushes are those. I, the brand is, is Silver Brush, and the, the product the series, line, the series is... Silver Silk 88. That's, uh, it's fairly new in our line. Let me just show that to you up close. And we have it both in short handle, as you can see, and I also have it long handle over here. And that's why I'm going to show you how I can, uh, we can work on an easel with the long handle brushes. Uh, short handle brushes really aren't made for, for working at an easel. But here I've taken, um, this is a canvas pad, and I put a, uh, Yesterday, I put a, um, a background coating on it, a clear background coating, so that it would actually grab the acrylic color. Because sometimes you just can't put acrylic color on a canvas board, it'll just sit on the top of it and it won't dry. Whereas this, that I put the coating on, it's a gloss coat, it, it'll adhere to the um, canvas very, very well. Lots so, of great questions. I'm just going to fire a few at you. Sure. Um, Again, the question, so this is synthetic, yes. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Um yes. it's not the black velvet, that's a different silver brush product line altogether. Um, right. it's more for watercolors mm -hmm. and, and inks and dyes mm -hmm. uh, and gouache. This is the silver silk eighty eight that we're talking about. Right. Um, question for you was can you use it for oils? Okay. You can use it for oils. What's the trick with oils? It's the cleanup. If you put a synthetic brush into oil color, you must clean it up with an odorless solvent. Odorless solvent from an art supply store. Not something that you get cheap at the big box stores, because that's going to destroy this filament. Remember, it's still synthetic. If you put this brush into solvent-based turpentine, it's going to melt the filaments. Understand that. So when, when in the past somebody has sent me back a brush and I look at it and it's all curled like this, there's virtually nothing I can do to get the curl out. It has melted into that shape and that's because they put that brush into turpentine. So do these brushes work in gouache? Uh, beautifully. I'm going to show that to you today. Great. So we Absolutely. We are absolutely it, have some gouache. Does it hold a good amount of water? A few people have asked about the holding capacity of this brush. Okay, it holds a sufficient quantity of watercolor so that you don't have to go back and forth a million times. But understand, it's a, it's a, um, a brush for a acrylic paint. So it's going to hold less than the black velvet, not as much as the... Um, golden natural because golden natural has natural hair in it 
and that holds a tremendous amount of fluid but it will hold a huge amount of color and you'll be able to get your strokes very comfortably with this notice it's not as thick as some other brushes that are out there and that is because we wanted to be able to get the color to move down off of the brush and onto the surface um, it's not going to be as absorbent as black velvet but it is going to be very very absorbent for a synthetic fiber the other thing that i would have mentioned too is that um, the prices on this are extremely reasonable so that you will be able to buy maybe three or four to one of another brand so it, you know that's one of the things that makes this such a, a desirable uh, line as far as I'm concerned so let me let me show you some things um, I'm going to show you first I'm going to show you what it was meant for which is fluid acrylics and I'm going to pretend that I'm an artist which I'm not but this is a great shape look at that it's called a um, soft curve so it's soft on this side and yet it's, it's squared out on this side so you get some wonderful wonderful strokes on that it it really is just so much more interesting you get all kinds of interesting strokes on that and, and this is a fluid acrylic okay so I, i'm using that on a fluid acrylic but let me try another shape so that you get the feel and know that um, it's very, very versatile. This is an angular. I'd like to tell you an interesting story about angular brushes. Angular brushes were started about 1980, and I was a manufacturer's representative then. And uh, the company I represented actually designed angular brushes, and that's this one. I'm sure all of you have an angular brush in your um, toolbox. And we couldn't sell them at all. They were just they were just like duds on the market. But we all persevered and people started teaching with them. And lo and behold, today that's one of everybody's favorite shape. Why is that? Because it's got a short length out here, a long length out at the top, and you can really control that filament on the surface. So let me put this in, uh, uh, this is watercolor now. I'm gonna put this in watercolor. And I'm going to grab a little bit of this orange here. This is gouache. And I'm going to put this down on my surface over here. So we have a little pumpkin that I kind of outlined. And I thought that was kind of representative of the, uh, the time of year where, that we're in. We're in um, Halloween is coming at the end of this month. And um, we just put a little bit of paint on that. This, this is an acrylic paint now that I'm using. So that would be um, a tube acrylic? It is definitely a tube acrylic. It absolutely is. Now, no one's to make fun of my artwork because we all know I'm a businesswoman and not an artist, but I do enjoy experimenting with these brushes. They have such a wonderful feel. Notice how nicely it does hold a lot of color on that surface. So I'm able to put uh, a lot of paint down. Now that's acrylic, that's fluid acrylic, and that's watercolor. And then I'll keep on using more. I'm going to next show you gouache. And I'm going to use a different shape for the gouache. And let's see, what should we use here? Let's use a, um, this is, this is, oh, this is such a wonderful brush. This is called the ultimate round brush. Would you show a regular round as well? We had a question on that earlier about the difference uh, between the round and the ultra. Let's see if I have one here. Yes, here is, here is, no, this is another ultra round. Um, I don't, I oh, center. I must have one here. Here, here, here. Got I got it. No, I don't have it. Wait a second. I'm so in love with the ultra rounds that. Uh, <laughs> well, we can show it here in this. Good. Good. So you Let's can see that. here in the set. I hope you can see that through the plastic. That this is the number eight round. And it's a shorter it length out. The number six ultra round. So you can see the difference in the length out. So the ultra round has a longer length out it's got a big fat belly and you're able to do longer strokes with that okay the round though of course is a workhorse and everybody needs to get all kinds of different rounds into their um, into their utility uh, box now so I've used fluid acrylics I've used watercolor I've used um, some gouache. I'm going to take some gouache over here. And you have tube acrylic in there too. And I have tube acrylic also. We've used tube, tube acrylic. So 
I'm good. Someone asked if there's a liner in the Silver Silk 88 line. Yes, there, there is. There absolutely is. There is. Uh, if it ends with 07, that's 88, that would be an 8807. Here's a round. Oh, that's the Look, regular one. No, but that's the question not. was about the liner. No. It, so we have it, we just don't have it right here on yes. our table. <laughs> so this is, what I love about this, you notice how much paint it holds. This is, this is the, the ultra round. It holds so much paint, and here you, you start seeing the outline of, of this poor little pumpkin I'm making, and I hope I don't destroy it. But notice, notice how beautifully it holds lots and lots of paint, and that's the advantage of the ultra round. The round I like too, because th that's actually more controlling, the round. There's so, another question, if there's a filbert in the silver silk oh, 88 absolutely. Line. Absolutely, there's a filbert. There is... I don't think there's a... You have a long handle filbert there. I have a long handle filbert here, but I have... What do I have here? They're all interested in those. Show this one, even though... That's a, that's a filbert in uh, the long handle. Uh, we also have a cat's tongue in the uh, short handle, which has become very uh, versatile, very utilitarian. I'll use that. And one of the things that you can do with cat's tongues, of course, you can make those fun leaves. Uh, you can make flowers with them, flower petals. You can also make um, duck feathers of any kind, any kind of texture filament. Uh, another question, how mm -hmm. many different shapes and sizes are there total for the Silver Silk 88? For the short handle, there are 15 different shapes, 48 different sizes. Actually, now that we've added the triangle, uh, that well, would make sixteen different shapes yes. and fifty total shapes and sizes for the short yes. handle. So there's really a lot. To choose lots to from. choose from. Yeah. Lots and lots to choose from. And let me tell you something. It's very kind to your pocketbook, so you might really enjoy purchasing them. Well, we're coming out with new sets, you know, around the end of the year, yes. beginning of the next calendar year. So that's the that's the cat's tongue. Um, cat's tongue is a very versatile shape. Uh, you know, you can w use it on the edge like a like a liner and of course you can use it like I did to do like soft feather feathering see that so that's that's very very that's a lot of fun too question about how heavy the brush is not uh, at all is it how does it weigh in comparison with say a black velvet of the same, same thing size? same thing same same thing it's a very lightweight brush it's not going to get tiring in your hand whatsoever so the next thing I wanted to show you is um, the the long handle silver silk eighty eight uh, because I, I just want to make sure that anybody that works at an easel is able to to know that they can absolutely use this particular brush. and use it at an easel. So let me just... Oh, sorry guys, I'm just putting you back into the different, uh, different tripod here. I find it much more convenient to work uh, with a long handle brush at an easel, and that's why we have these long handle uh, Silver Silk 88s. Um, I find it, it's just, it's just an easier way to to paint, try and see if I can get some more of that yellow. So we have a whole different host of different kinds of um, paint that I'm using today. And what are you doing now? You're using the heavy body. I'm using actually just simple acrylics. Uh -huh. so I just acrylic. just tube acrylic. That's all I'm using. Um, you can use uh, this brush, this Silver Silk 88, with heavy body paint. Nothing will happen to it. Just remember that at the end of each painting session, you really want to try and clean it, clean it out, clean out the head, and let it dry flat. That's very, very important. I'm sure you all know that, and you're very, very tentative to your brushes, and you wouldn't dream of not cleaning them out perfectly the way you should. Well, you never know. I was talking with a very, very high-level professional teacher this week, mm -hmm. and uh, I, won't, I won't rat her out and say her name. She's a very talented and, and very sought-after teacher, 
but she admitted that she leaves her brushes in water for weeks at a time. <laughs> so we had good God. I told her she's not she's not allowed to ever tell you that. Good <laughs> God. I knew that would upset you. But uh, we all make mistakes like that. It's just better to take care of them and dry them flat, and of course, dry, not in water. No, they really should not be left in water at any given period of time because that you're, you're just asking for trouble. So with this, I'm using fluid acrylic and a little bit of gouache over here, and I'm going to get a little bit more coloring over here. And you could see that, you know, this amateur person, even I can make something look fairly respectable after a bit of uh, trying it out. Um, notice how comfortable it is standing at an easel with a long handle brush. Um, I'm, I'm always amazed that, to see somebody struggling with a short handle brush at an easel. You're so much better off with a long handle. Here's now, an interesting question. Do they work with glass paint as well? Yes, they do. They do work with glass paint. As a matter of fact, I can honestly say I think they'd be perfect for glass paint. Because one of the things you don't want is runoff. You do not want runoff. And you do not want them, um, you know what runoff is. That means that it comes right out of the brush and it's just going to flow all over the place. You want it to hold and grasp it. But you also need it to, to be very controlling. And that, that, that's perfect for glass paint, it really is. So uh, Bonnie Winkleman in uh, Manhattan is asking what, uh, what brush are you using right now? Okay, this is a very unique brush. I did want to discuss this with you. So this is something that I designed um, for another series that we have. This is an extra long filbert. Notice how long the length out is. It's much longer than the traditional filbert. See how much longer that is? That's so a good 25%. So you're, mm -hmm. you're comparing that it comes in both the traditional filbert yes. as well as the extra long filbert. Yes, and this, I, I tell you, this is just an amazing uh, opportunity to have a lot of color on here. You can, of course, make it very, very thin and just keep on painting. Um, it, it really gets, let, allows you to get right into the painting. Um, a very, very famous artist many years ago talked me into making extra long filberts. And um, I've always uh, appreciated his help with this. And his name was Nelson Shanks, if, if you happen to remember that name. He's uh, one of America's, was one of America's foremost portrait painters. Who and, were some of the folks he painted? Well, who was some of the... <laughs> so what happens with portrait painting is you become elevated according to the individuals that you paint. So if you're just painting Mr. Harry or Miss, Miss Doe, it's fine, then you're a wonderful portrait painter, but it, it depends on who hires you. So Nelson has painted Princess Diana, um, President Reagan, President Clinton, um, Pope John Paul II was his final portrait. Um, Lady- uh, All Martin, done with silver brush. All done with silver brush. I have the some of the pictures in, inside as a matter of fact. So that's how you get elevated by the people that you actually um, get to paint. So, and he was the one that worked with me on the length out on this extra long filbert. And he said, this is perfect for portraiture, but as you can see, I'm using it for pumpkin too. <laughs> and believe me, I'm, I'm not saying anything about me and, and Nelson in the same breath, that's for sure. But you can see how really, uh, you can get texture with this, you can get lightness in with it, and you can really get into that painting so that you feel like you're, you're part of it. And you, I know that a brush is an extension of your hand. And the most important thing you need to do is have comfort, and you have to have it do exactly what you need it to do. So I'm very cognizant of that, and we are all very, very cognizant of that. So this is our... So we had someone ask uh, mm -hmm. where they can buy the aprons, the silver brush apron. Well, that's not a question for me to answer. <laughs> That'll be um, Mr. Flax, who's holding the camera over there. I'm working on it. He's I just working placed on an it. order. We're, we're getting <laughs> We're getting made. for you. So uh, yeah. we'll, we'll have news on that coming up soon in yeah. about a month or so, everybody. So on, uh, something else, again, I'm using the long-handled silver silk. Quite a few people are asking if these are okay with oil paint, and again... I know you've answered it earlier. But, but I'm going to say it out. again. Yeah. I'm going to say it again. Yes, you can use it with oil color. Remember, it's very soft. So it may not move the oil color quite like you're used to with a hog bristle brush 
or something that's stiffer. This is a very, very soft filament. But some of you are looking for something that's very soft so you get a feathering effect, and I appreciate that. You can use it. Never put synthetic brushes in turpentine. You want to put it in an odorless solvent that you've purchased from an art supply reseller. Very, very important. Very practical advice. Write that down. Um, I have um, a little booklet which is online and you can download it. It's called Tender Loving Care of Artist Brushes. I wrote this about... It's on our website, silverbrush.com, yes. uh, silverbrush.com. Just go to brochures right on the home page. There's a link for brochures. And what you can do is you can look up how to clean your brushes, how to take care of your brushes, how to store your brushes. So quite a few people have asked how long do the brushes last? It's according to how you treat them. You know, it's, it's sort of like your, your body. You take good care of your body. You don't bring in harsh chemicals and stuff like that. Your body's going to last much, much longer. Brushes are very much um, a product of how you take care of them. If you clean them every day, you don't leave them in water, um, you take it out of the water, you, you know what, you could just leave it flat like that and it dries very, very nicely. I prefer if you try and let it dry with, you know, the head going down a little bit, but that's a lovely way to let your brushes dry. Leave it in paint overnight, leave it in water overnight, and I can guarantee you, you'll move right through those brushes very, very quickly because they don't like to be left into water. In water. But in terms of, of how long they can last, if they're well cared for, we, we certainly have many, many years. customers. Absolutely bring, years. Decades, years. Really, we have folks bringing us 10 and 20 year old brushes years. that they want uh, to show us. I, I, gave out, um, I gave out prototypes of my ruby satin brushes back in 1995. There's two artists that I'm still very close with, and they are still using those prototypes, 1995. So what is that, uh, 25 years ago? Yep. I think it is. Yep. So, I mean, these brushes should last you for years. This How about is the what plastic happens. cap? Another question. What do we do with the plastic cap? That Take it off when you come home and you throw it away. That's what you do with a plastic cap. The plastic cap is for this. It goes from the factory floor to your reseller shelf. You put it up on there so your brushes look nice on your reseller shelf, and then you bring it home, and then you take it home, and you throw it away. Do not, repeat, do not put plastic caps back on brushes. Do not do that, okay? I hope I answered that properly. That's great. Yeah. Okay. Moving back. And again, in terms of media, we're getting a lot of questions about what media Silver Silk is good for. Uh, it's so, rated. Go ahead. Watercolor. I've got watercolor here. I've got fluid acrylics. It's perfect for fluid acrylics. I have more watercolor. I have gouache. And I have regular acrylics. So anything with a water base, that's what we recommend it for. You want to use it for oil base? Go right ahead. But remember, odorless solvent only. You can also use it for another very interesting product that I've recently tried for the first time. I used it with um, walnut ink. I thought that was a very, very interesting product, and it works very, very nicely. It works very nicely. So if you're doing sepia tone paintings or touching up phot photography or something like that, and you need a really good brush that's going to hold the color on the filament, you should try um, some of the silver silk as well. So. I had a question about where the brushes are made. So the Silver Silk line is made in our factory in Sri Lanka. Um, and you guys should all know that all of Silver brush, uh, brushes are, are handmade. So each brush that you buy is handmade. They, they, they can't be just cranked out with a machine. They have to be done uh, by a particular artisan. Um, and the, the folks who work on our brushes, they have to have at least three years of experience making brushes. Um, and for our, our you know, our top lines, the Black Velvet, the Grand Prix, uh, those artisans have to have seven years experience um, to, just to work on those brushes. So that these are, you know, highly, highly specialized, handmade product. Um, and uh, yeah, the Sri Lanka folks do, do a great job. Good question. Will soap on these brushes be okay for cleaning them? Yes, you absolutely can use soap, but make sure it doesn't have any detergents in it. If it has detergent in it, that means it has little particles and it can actually damage the brushes. So nothing with balsam and nothing with detergent. That's very important. My favorite, um, one of my favorite things I, I use is uh, like um, 
like ivory liquid. I really love that, but I have not been able to find ivory so liquid. Someone asked, why can't we use it in heavy bodied acrylic? You can. You can. We just don't have it here. That's why you I can. listed it earlier. But you, absolutely you, can, can. you absolutely can. The thing is, um, you know, you, you see, see if it works for you. I do a practice sheet before I actually um, did anything with heavy bodied acrylics because uh, it may not function quite like you want it to. It may, it may not, but uh, you know what? This is such a terrific brush. It holds its color. You can see that I'm just having just a, a swell time with this and getting this. How about for silk dye? Uh, it works very well for silk dye, I, but I would actually use um, Golden Natural and Black Velvet for silk dye. I think that's a much better brush, and that's because of the animal hair that's in um, Golden Natural. I, we planned on only talking about um, um, silver, silk. silver silk today, but I will bring this in. Um, because of the, the hair that's in black, uh, in gold and natural, so you get a lot of, you can see it, the little black hairs in it. That's natural hair with the golden tackle on. So what you're going to have is a marvelous absorbency. And you'll be able to use this. Do it on the back. You'll be able to use the um, golden natural because how about photo color inks photo color inks I would use silver silk I would also use um, golden natural yeah. what I'm trying to do is give you the most brush for your buck and that's what you're going to get with all of these this is a golden natural it is a natural hair and synthetic blend and this is going to be terrific with silk dyes and silk inks and things like that. Good question here from Karen Dawes Colley. Compared to black velvet and ruby satin, mm -hmm. where do the silver silk 88s compare in terms of stiffness versus softness? So black velvet is extremely soft. And what was the second one? Ruby satin. Ruby satin is going to be the stiffer. So it would be in between the black velvet and the ruby satin. That's where you'd find silver silk. So Monica Witsock saying it's a shame I can't get silver brush here in Poland. Uh, we do have a, de uh, a dealer now in Kiev, Ukraine. So I'm not sure if you have access online uh, to Kolir in the Ukraine, uh, K-O-L-I-R. But uh, they are doing a great job and they carry silver brush now in the Ukraine. And, and if you, people if you saying they, they still love your water cups stand jealous that that's not available somewhere <laughs> yeah that's a funny thing that's a funny story so I'm using fluid acrylics <clears throat> which I absolutely love with this particular brush because I don't think there's anything like it on the market that's ever going to hold fluid acrylics quite like the silver silk the reason again is because of the serrated edges all around it so unlike the majority of brushes that are out there, which, which has a synthetic filament just like this, with no differentiation at all, you get this marvelous holding capacity. You know, um, silver, uh, fluid acrylics have a bit of tackiness to them, whereas watercolor doesn't. Watercolor is just a very, very smooth type of paint. But fluid acrylics, you really need something that's going to hold it a lot better than just any brush out there. And that's what the advantage is of, of this particular series. And it's, it's just a great series. Now I have a, some very nice stroke sheets here I'd like to show you that Kira in our office did. She, she did a marvelous job. You know what, we actually had a question about how to get hardened uh, paint out of the brush. Ah. And look what you have right here. Well. Some boiling water. Some boiling water. So. Yeah, you may have seen me do this before, you may not have seen me do this before, but um, this is a very important methodology. So what happens with everybody is that sometimes you leave paint on your brush that you didn't mean to leave there. And you're having a devil of a time getting it off and just regular water. So we need something that's a bit more extreme than that. You also may have hair flying all over the place. I'm sure you've seen that, and you, I'm sure that's been a, kind of annoying for you. The best thing for that is just some boiling hot water. 
So here, before Warren got me this nice water bucket, I used to just go over to the microwave oven and put a cup of water into the microwave for two minutes, and it was extremely hot. But now I have this very fancy water bucket that you know heats up while I'm here. And what you do is you just, usually I wait until it's a rolling boil, which it was just a few minutes ago, and notice how it takes all the color out of there. How long do I leave it in there? What was it, five, 10 seconds, that's all. I'm not cooking the brush, I'm not stirring soup, just get it in there. It does a couple of things. Number one, it takes the paint out, which is just wonderful, but it also straightens the hair. It relaxes, the boiling hot water actually straightens the hair and, and, um, and it makes it go back to its original shape. So it needs a little bit more. This brush I use a lot and so just you're asking, in there. what is this? It's just a, a pot for boiling water. That's all it is. Um, and that's just plain water. We just took it right out of the sink just yeah, a few I minutes mean, ago. Most people use that and for coffee or tea. It was $18 at our local you know, warehouse store near us. So right. not, a, uh, not a fancy product at all. Just, just something for boiling water. And so I'll, I'll show you that again. This is a, the angle brush that I was using earlier. Try and get some more paint out of that. And now I'm going to put it in the boiling hot water and get the rest of the paint out. How often can you do this? Just long enough so that you can get the paint out. One thing I would say is don't go above the middle of the ferrule. But if you've got hard paint that's inside the ferrule, which is where it really collects, you want to melt that um, paint in there so that you can go back to reusing the brush. You can't use brushes where the hair is going all over. Put it in the boiling hot water, just like that, very quick. Comes right out. Now, if it's been in your brush for more than a year, good luck. I don't know what to tell you. Um, but <clears throat> try and get to the brushes before you go on vacation and before you're out of town and before you're gone to your summer home in some place. Um, try and get that paint out of there because you really you want to preserve your brushes. We understand that. So that's the great thing about boiling hot water. It really does the trick. And um, you know, obviously, it's it's. Uh, doesn't cost you anything to do that. Is and, it safe uh, to clean hard brushes with vinegar? Why would you do that? <laughs> That's a question. I never heard that question. That's I've never question. heard that one. No. Yeah. Vinegar? What would be the advantage of that? I, d I don't know the answer to that. Okay. Uh, is it better to leave them flat or upright? You want to leave them flat. Leave them flat. So what happens? You've, you've cleaned this brush, uh, say this brush was $7, the US dollars. Say this brush was $7 and you leave it like this to dry because you're busy putting it in your, in your brush bucket. Well, this is what happens. Notice how the water is boiling. The moisture, as you're drying it, goes down into the ferrule. Now we put a triple epoxy barrier within each one of the, the ferrules. What does that mean, triple epoxy barrier? So you have glue, heavy, heavy glue here here and here at the top of the head and it's a barrier to stop the moisture going on the handle. Where people get in trouble is when they leave their brush like this to dry and the moisture starts going into the ferrule, it starts cracking after a very long period of time, it'll crack the, the epoxy barrier and you'll start getting water on the handle and crack the paint on the handle. So never ever leave your brushes like this, always leave them flat. So uh, Lynn is saying vinegar is used to prevent lime deposits. So I guess that oh, that must be process. a certain type of paint, a uh, certain type of water in where you live. We don't have that here, so I'm really not familiar with that. If you must know, and I I believe you, but um, I have no I have no experience with that whatsoever. So I, I can't give that to you. I guess I really ought to find out more about that because that's a very interesting thing. I'm always interested in anything that has to do with uh, brushes, lime deposits. Okay, so... So do the synthetic filaments get affected by the boiling water? No. You saw how quickly I put them in? You see how quickly I put them in? And then I take them right out. Nothing happens to them. They stay just perfect. And they're ready for you to come back and go back to painting, which is, which is what you want to do. Here you go. This is acrylic that I'm doing here. And then I'm going to do watercolor again. This is my cat's tongue. I love my cat's tongue. So much fun. And this is watercolor. Do you want to finish your pumpkin? We have six minutes left. 
Uh, it's kind of scary looking, isn't it, my pumpkin? Well, it's Halloween. It's supposed to be scary. <laughs> well, what I'm really interested is in showing you the brushes and, and the brush techniques you can get out of that. So I, I started this one over here, and I wanted to show you the long handle um, brushes. I think that's very important for you to see that. Um, and so this is uh, some fluid acrylic. I'm not sure how that's going to do, but I thought, well, let me do a little bit of a background. And this is our wash brush in the silver silk. Notice how nicely that lays it down. It lays the color in the background. I like it soft. And what size is that one, that wash? This wash is one and a half inches. And it really does a beautiful, beautiful job. Um, I do know that we have a number of resellers online where you can purchase these brushes. Uh, Jerry's has this in stock. Um, I can't remember who else has it in stock. The brush guys. The brush guys have it in stock. We have a bunch of people that are carrying this. Hyatt's, I think, has it in stock. I'm not sure. And um, it's, it's just really a, a fantastic series. It's something that um, if you don't have a, maybe one or two for your paint box, I think you, it'll become your go-to brush. You know, I know that you know you have a bunch of brushes all over your studio and you're using this and you're using that, and you'll see that just keep on grabbing this brush because it does exactly what you need it to do. And um, that's one of the great things about it. I love this series, I really do. Uh, it's very versatile. It's got lots and lots of different ones. This is a dagger striper that um, I put in, and we've got all kinds of different sizes on the dagger stripers. I'm going to show that to you. So this is a half inch and this is a one quarter inch. And uh, you, you know, you get those really nice dagger striper um, shapes. So let me do this for you. So this is dagger striper. And I think we did a bunch of dagger stripers last time we were talking together. and. This is, you'll be able to do so much better than I can. And as a matter of fact, I have some stroke sheets here of different brush heads that Kira has done. So that, that's a very big dagger. And then I have a much smaller one. I'll do it in a different color. And that is our small little dagger. And you know, the, the advantage of a dagger striper is that it gives you a, a lovely stroke. Go ahead, show the brush, and I don't know if I showed the head before, so they can see the dagger striper. There's the dagger striper, that's a small one, that's a quarter inch, yeah. and then we also have, we have a few sizes in them, and this is a half inch. Very nice. Okay. And, and then, do you have a soft curve there too? I do have a soft curve. I have a soft curve right here. And then, so compare that to the dagger striper. Here's the dagger striper. You can see the difference in what those can do. And then the angle. Should and then too? the angle, sure. And then all of them, they do different things. Yes, they do. So you can kind of see. There you go. How, yes. you know, depending on your style, you know, of course you can play with all three, but I think it's great when you can choose what specifically works best for you. And then I'm going to introduce something brand new to you, which is really exciting. We now are going to have, I think within the next uh, couple months, we're going to have a triangle in the um, silver silk. Yeah. And, um, and it's brand new. You can see there's not even a stamp yeah, on the Yeah, this, is, this, is, this a is a prototype. prototype. Yeah. This is just a prototype. And so what you can do with that is you can make lovely flowers. And do you have Kira's sheet where she I, worked on it? Yeah, Kira has some more talent than I do, that's for sure. And let me see if I can find that for you. Okay. Here we go. That is the, um, the oh, that's a deer foot. Excuse me. We also have a deer foot. We have a lot of shapes in the. Uh, Let's get, oops, sorry. Uh, here's a deer foot. Let's see what that yes. head looks like. Yep. The deer foot stippler. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the stroke she did with that. That's, from That's the, deer the deer foot. foot. And then this is from the triangle. This is from the triangle. And that's this guy over here. And that's keep on working it. And it, it's really got a very nice softness to it. Uh, we came out with this because uh, everybody really loved the ruby satin, which is a very, very heavy uh, 
a filament and it really holds its shape, but this will give you a softer feel for that. And yes, they do. Uh, Lynn just pointed out they really hold a lot of color. That's exactly right. That's the idea of this this whole line, the silver silk eighty eight. Right. That's how great it is at, at holding the color. So I I know we just have a few more minutes left, and I do want to tell you something extremely exciting. I believe I showed you this painting before. This is late John Lewis. Um, he was a um, he was a congressman in the United States Congress and he recently passed away unfortunately but this is a painting that was done by Michael Shane Neal um, he uses um, this is so this is a portrait of of uh, John Lewis um, there's many de details about it but one of the things I want to tell you is that um, we do three sets from Michael Shane Neal and uh, Shane used Grand Prix Silverstone Renaissance uh, brushes uh, for this painting and this painting has uh, just been acquired by the National Portraits um, Gallery in Washington DC so that's quite a feather in Shane's quill in, in his hat uh, and we're very proud of that because this is another painting that was done with silver brush that is in the National Portrait Gallery so I do have to crow about it I'm really very very excited um, I wish COVID wasn't going on because I have on my agenda to get down to the National Portrait Gallery and make a list of all the paintings that were done with our brushes. Like the um, recent portrait of uh, Michelle Obama, that's I think in the National Portrait Gallery, if not, it, it has another prestigious place that it is. So I, I did want to announce that. Uh, we're very proud of uh, Michael Shane Neal and his great accomplishment and um, yeah, congratulations to him Michael that, that's, that's really exciting very exciting it you. really is so I want to thank you very much for coming today well we're going to give away some free stuff here Hold well on. go right ahead yet. that's fine all right that's so wonderful we have three winners and let me grab what we're giving away here again we're all about silver silk today so we have these great sets uh, our first winner is Karen Dawes Cauley in Michigan, and Karen gets the, uh, the mini mop set. Congratulations oh. to you. And then secondly, we have this case. This is for Abby Sanchez. Abby, congratulations. And then our third winner is Padmini Venkateshwarlu, and that is this silver silk set, and Padmini is in, in India. So congratulations to you, Padmini. And thank you very much for coming today. I love seeing you. I really appreciate your time. It's a joy for me to be here and be able to talk to you directly. Um, we do have a website. You could send us notes on the website. Um, we're always interested in what you're doing. Send us photos of some of your paintings if you'd like. Um, really appreciate it. Silverbrush.com. Silverbrush it's and really in fact, easy. Now we have a, a pop-up window where you can register with your email address. So by all means, do that. Uh, for those who are registered, we're going to let you know when we have new products coming out. So you'll be the first to know uh, whenever we develop a new product. Just go to silverbrush.com and, and enter your email address, um, and we'll keep you up to date on everything that's going on. And our next Facebook Live, everybody, is going to be in 15 days. So October 22nd, two weeks from tomorrow, uh, at this same time, 12 noon Eastern time. Um, and, and that's a Wednesday, right? That's a Thursday. Oh, it's a Thursday. So 15 days. 15 um, days. And what are we doing in two weeks? I know we discussed it yesterday. Well, we, uh, I would like to show you all of the new brushes that I'm bringing in. And we have a lot of different shapes uh, in some of the same series that we have now, like Ruby Satin and um, just a, a bunch of new wonderful things. Um, I've got new scrubber brushes coming in. Oh, Golden Natural and the Bristol on Short Handle also. And Bristol on Short yeah. Handle and yes. Golden Natural again. So I think you're, we're going to have a very good time. Um, thank you again for coming today. We really appreciate it. Um, I'm going to be doing a Facebook Live uh, with Jerry's Autorama on October the 20th. I'm going to be working with Amy there. And if you'd like to come back again and, and see me, um, I'm looking forward to that. I'm just going to be going through a lot of different brushes and talking about the what makes it a better product than something else that's on the market. So please join me, and I really appreciate your time. Take care now. Thanks, everybody. Bye.